This is Strictly Business, presented by the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce. Sponsored in part by the Law Offices of Young Woldridge, San Joaquin Community Hospital. And welcome back to Strictly Business. I'm Nathan Ali, Manager of Government Affairs at the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce. In our final segment this week, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the uh, legislation that uh, impacts business at the state level. And joining us now on the phone from Sacramento is Jennifer Barrera. She's a policy advocate uh, uh, for labor and employment, legal and taxation issues for the California Chamber of Commerce. And she's going to help provide some insight for us on some of this legislation. Good morning, Jennifer. How are you? Good morning. I'm great. Thank you for having me. How are things in Sacramento? Oh, it's busy, very busy. We've hit, we've hit the chaotic point here in Sacramento. I <laughs> sure have. So let's uh, let's start talking a little bit about some of these bills. Um, any that, that really specifically uh, jump out, maybe uh, let's start with AB 67. I understand that's about double pay on the holiday. What's up with that one? Yeah, so this one uh, defines a family holiday as basically Thanksgiving and Christmas and specifies that an employer has to provide an employee who works hours on those days um, double their regular rate of pay, which is actually different than their hourly rate of pay. And so it's a huge cost impact um, for businesses who are operating on either of those holidays. And from our perspective, it infringes on their rights under the Constitution with regard to the uh, state mandating Christmas as a holiday on which they have to provide double compensation. Oh, okay. So even for exempt employees, this would have um, impact them as well? Yes, they have not carved them out of the bill yet, although they specified that their intent was only to uh, have this applied to hourly employees. But the language of the bill would still be applicable to salaried employees as well. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> some other interesting, uh, interesting bills dealing with work hours. Um, maybe yeah. talk a little bit about AB 357. I understand that's a, a, one of the first job killers of 2015. It is. It's the first announced job killer of 2015. Um, AB 357 is going to be one of the bigger issues, I would suspect, this year. Um, it is introduced by Assemblymember Chu, who is a new member here to the legislature. He comes out of San Francisco, and um, he is uh, introducing a bill that was just passed in the San Francisco um, area uh, ordinance that mandates that employers provide two weeks' notice of employee schedules, and then they have to basically um, any changes made thereafter would be subject to penalties, statutory penalties. Oh wow! So last minute changes because of employee requests for time off, or because somebody um, is unable to make a shift, that would all be subject to potential penalties. If you have employees on call, they would be um, entitled to penalties as well. So it's a pretty broad bill. Um, and then in addition to the mandated scheduling, there's a second part of the bill that provides unlimited time off for an employee to attend uh, appointments with a county agency to apply for public benefits and then creates a new protected classification for those employees or if they are a family member of somebody who's receiving public benefits. So a lot of different provisions in the bill, very problematic for a lot of businesses here in California. Okay. Um, and we mentioned that this is uh, one of Cal Chambers' first, uh, it's their first announced job killer of the year. Uh, for those that aren't familiar, could you explain briefly the Job Killers Program and how that works? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we Every year we uh, review the legislation that's been introduced and identify those bills that we really think will have either an impact on businesses creating jobs here in California, on businesses locating here to California, um, or if it's going to have an impact on them actually reducing their workforce, that's also included on the job killer list. And we go through it um, on all areas, um, policy areas, not just labor and employment or legal, but all policy areas. Um, the list will come out probably uh, sometime this week is what is anticipated, and um, it identifies those bills that we truly believe um, have that impact on, on the employers in California. The job killer list is done on an annual basis, um, and we've had a very high success rate on stopping those bills in the legislature or at the governor's office. Outstanding. Um, how about a couple of other bills that uh, I know we're working on? Uh, I, I know that, that, that the business community is very concerned about uh, frivolous litigation. Maybe if you would talk a little bit about AB 52. Yeah, and, you know, if you don't mind, I might talk about them all together. Oh, since they're all go ahead, addressing. absolutely. Um, great, okay. AB 52, AB 54... Um, SB 67, and uh, what will be a substantive bill, SB 251. 
These are all bills dealing with the frivolous litigation that we have consistently been seeing in California, dealing with um, access for the disabled into uh, public accommodations. And what we have seen in a lot of different areas, our small businesses are being hit by these drive-by lawsuits where they allege that there is a violation of the construction standards or the ADA, and they basically leverage these businesses to settle the cases without actually improving any access for those that are actually disabled. Um, it's been a huge issue that has been going on for years here in California. It's got national attention um, by Senator Feinstein a few years ago, which prompted Senator Steinberg, who was the pro tem at the time, to try and do legislation on this issue. But despite their efforts in the past to address it, it still continues to plague the entire state, and really, really small businesses are ones that are more... Um, susceptible to getting these drive-by lawsuits. So these bills that I just mentioned, 52, 54, SB 67, and 251, are all trying to address those lawsuits that are being um, leveraged against the small businesses in California. And we are supportive of all of them. Um, SB 251 by Senator Roth is actually one that we will be sponsoring and supporting um, to try and address these frivolous lawsuits. We are more than supportive of creating um, businesses that are ADA compliant and accessible for all patrons, including those that are disabled. But we don't believe that these frivolous lawsuits should continue and should uh, basically be harming our small businesses by leveraging them for, for unjustified settlements. Okay. And I understand that here in the, in the Central Valley especially, there's been um, a lot of increased activity when it comes to these drive-by lawsuits. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think in all areas, they have been um, certainly uh, certainly hit hard. Um, the, the Central Valley is one that we've seen a lot of increase in the claims being alleged. Okay. Um, talk a little bit, if you would, please, about some of the other legislation that Cal Chamber is looking at. Obviously, they monitor every piece of legislation that comes through, but uh, any sure. other particular hot spots that uh, Cal Chamber is looking at? Yeah, you know, um, in the labor and employment field, uh, there's going to be an, there's another bill that's been introduced, AB 465, dealing with arbitration agreements for employers. Um, I think generally most employers use arbitration agreements as a way in which to resolve claims in a more efficient and expeditious manner um, with their employees, and that bill would basically ban the use of arbitration agreements for employers. Um, there's also two different proposals on increasing the minimum wage again. So I know this has been a battle across the state and a lot of local jurisdictions where cities and counties are considering local initiatives to raise the minimum wage. But here at the state level, we have two bills pending um, that would propose to increase the state minimum wage even higher. So those are certainly bills that we're watching, monitoring, um, and we'll be working on throughout this legislative session. Okay. And how would you recommend that a a small business owner um, get involved? What, what, what can you do to kind of stop some of these, uh, these, these anti-business legislation? What, what, what can a small business owner do? Sure, that's a great question. And it's actually very important for the local businesses that are being impacted by this legislation to reach out to their local representatives. So for Bakersfield, Assemblymember Salas, Assemblymember Grove, um, those are great great contacts for the businesses to have and to um, express their concerns with different legislation. Certainly, we advocate at the state level for employers, and we have our arguments as to why bills are either good or bad for the business community. But when they hear specifically from businesses in their district, it makes a huge impact and helps us um, better able to do our jobs here at the state level. So I would encourage any of the local businesses to try and develop relationships with their local representatives, um, contact them about bills that they believe are problematic. The Chamber of Commerce, obviously the local Chamber of Commerce are very involved and um, assist us in a lot of different ways in advocating at the local level. So any of those outlets that a small business can engage in would be great and really helpful in either stopping this problematic legislation or promoting positive legislation that will help the business community. Great. And I, I understand that uh, there's a large class of, of freshman legislators up in Sacramento this year. Um, how yeah. do you think that'll impact um, what they're hearing for, or what they're interested in hearing from their constituents? Yeah, you know, um, you're, you're absolutely right. There's a huge freshman class this year um, who is under the new term limits of 12 years. And so um, I think it will change the dynamic up here in a positive way as far as they don't feel rushed to um, engage in 
really big pieces of legislation without getting some history and understanding of the issue. Um, and I think they are more sensitive to what their district demands are and what their constituents want because they're going to be here for potentially 12 years. And so they definitely are looking at serving their district. So it's a great opportunity for businesses in the district to really educate their members, their representatives on what is important to them and what's going to help um, them with uh, being successful and growing jobs. I mean, every member in the legislature obviously is still very sensitive to the economy and wants to see job growth in their district. That's all something that they want. And so if businesses in their district can give them input and information on how that can happen um, and legislation that will either harm that or help that, it's a great opportunity with such a huge freshman class to do that. Great. And are we seeing a willingness to work uh, in a more bipartisan effort thus far in the session? You know, I, I would hope so. I think that's um, the hope for everybody is that we're going to see more bi- bipartisan efforts. Um, I would say it's probably too early to tell. Um, we haven't had any uh, serious floor debates yet or um, huge bills go to the floor in either house to see what the bipartisan efforts are going to be. But I certainly think that that is uh, the optimistic hope from everybody in the community is that the, the longer term limited term limits and the new freshman members will, will provide a more bipartisan group effort from everyone. Great. Jennifer Barrera, policy advocate for the California Chamber of Commerce, joining us on the phone from Sacramento. Thank you so much for joining us, Jennifer. Again, thank you for having me. All right. Well, that's it for Strictly Business this week. That's all the time we have. I want to thank uh, my guest, Beatrice Sanders, Executive Director of the Kern County Farm Bureau, Marcia Sutton with BBSI, talking a little bit about background checks for employers and what, uh, what some of the pitfalls are, Dustin Pitcher, the Technical Director of the Marcom Group, and our own Melissa Rossiter, Manager of Marketing and Communications for the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce, and, of course, Jennifer Barrera, the Policy Advocate for Labor and Employment, Legal and Taxation for the California Chamber of Commerce. That's all the time we have for this week. We'll be back next week. I want to thank our sponsors, San Joaquin Community Hospital and the Law Offices of Young Woldridge, for all their continued support of the program. And for Melissa Rossiter and all the rest of us at the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce, I'm Nathan Ali. Have a great week, and we'll see you next Monday at 10 a.m. here on Bakersfield.com for more Strictly Business. Take care.